Hello guys. Um, I hope like me you too know that you are blessed and highly favoured. A magnet for miracles, the solution to someone's problem and the answer to someone's prayer. I'm sorry I'm late, but me and my phone, we're having a fight. I don't know what's going on, but it's got a mind of its own. There's a crack in my screen I need to get sorted out because it just keeps typing away. Open up different windows and doing all sorts of crazy things. But anyway, I finally managed to win, right? October the 2nd, given a face-to-face -face encounter with God, I adventure. Do you know who I am? In the great scheme of things, do I account for anything? So many messages tell us we don't. We get laid off at work, turned away at school. Everything from acne to Alzheimer's leaves us feeling like the girl with no date to the prom. We react, we validate our existence with a fluffy flurry of activity. We do more, we buy more, achieve more. All of our wrestlings, I suppose, are merely asking this question, do I matter? All of grace, I believe, is God's definitive reply. Be blessed, my child, I accept you. I've adopted you into my family. That's the word for today. So, um, the 100 sit-up challenge. I asked that question and I'll put it there because everyone sets the challenge and we've got these arbitrary challenges and it was really something I saw on Twitter yesterday that I'm speaking to and then I replied to it again this morning. So I asked the question, why? Why 100 sit-ups? Especially when they're done from the floor and I just did that last week and shared with you at the beginning of last week or just over a week ago. The pressure fluctuations from the diaphragm create the biggest pressure. So you get pressure inside the abdominal. So you get fluctuations, right? The pressure from the diaphragm creates the biggest pressure fluctuations in the abdominal wall and they ultimately impact your pelvic floor. As a woman, do you really want to be doing 100 sit-ups as a female when you know the diaphragm is going to create pressure here, which is going to create pressure down here? Now, not only that, if you're doing 100 sit-ups from the floor, you're only working from the range of motion that you can work. I already told you last week that the abdominal wall has to fully extend, can fully extend, when it takes you back here. So this is an extended abdominal wall. Now, if I'm just working from the floor to here, to here, to here, I'm just shortening and shortening and shortening the abdominal wall. So 100 times. So once a woman can do 100 sit-ups in a day, she's going to be doing them every day. Then all that's going to do is pull her forward and down because it shortens muscles that contract and contract, it shortens. You're not working for your full range of movement. So once she does that, that restricts the, it, it depresses the first rib angle, it restricts the rib cage, it restricts the diaphragm, which then means the abdominal wall can't function properly which means the pelvic floor won't function properly, no matter what you do. But it's also going to bring you into a position of poor posture. Now, the answer that came back was that everyone has to flex the trunk at some point to get out of bed every day. That's true. But you don't need to do 100 sit-ups to, to achieve that. That You really don't. And at the end of the day, what you really want is to strengthen the transverse abdominals, which are the major, major stabiliser for the low back. You want to trans strengthen the fibres of the internal obliques and lower abdominals because all of that stuff works with your pelvic floor and it works for trunk stabilisation and pelvic stability. So, why do you want to do 100 sit-ups? If you can do 100 sit-ups over the ball and you can vary it, fine. But still, why do you want to do 100 sit-ups? Why do you want to do a 100 sit-up challenge? That's my question. What are you doing in everyday life where you need to have such strong upper abdominals for your neck and shoulder complex? What are you doing? Are you a boxer? Are you a basketball player? Are you a rugby player? If you're those kind of things, then yeah. But even at that, you don't need to do 100 sit-ups. You can actually do, as I said to you, you can use a, a dumbbell and you can load the abdominals accordingly. But you need to be able to know that, yes, we have to flex the trunk every day to get out of bed. But you don't need to flex it so much that you need to be here. You've got the strength in the upper abdominals to wake up in the morning and lift yourself up. You can do work for your neck flexors, then do the inchworm. That will strengthen them. 
In fact, do the inchworm, and that will not only work your neck flexors, it will work the whole of the abdominal, and it will work the hip flexors at the same time. And it's a much better exercise. So, my question is, the 100 sit-up challenge has been set by a physio. I don't understand why. I don't understand as a female why I need to do 100 sit-ups, and especially from the floor. If I'm gonna do 100 sit-ups, trust me when I tell you, I'm gonna start from here, and I'm gonna extend my trunk completely, so that at least I can work my neck flexors, trunk flexors, hip flexors, as a unit. I'm gonna extend myself completely, and I'm gonna work from here, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna come up, and I guarantee you, I won't get to 100. My abdominal wall will be exhausted long before that. But I have to ask myself, do I need to have such strong upper abdominals? I don't play basketball. I don't play rugby. I'm not a boxer. I go to my lovely boxing class, Blaze, but I'm just punching a, a bag, hanging. I'm just punching a hanging bag. That's it. No one's punching me back. So I don't need to have that kind of strength in my abdominals. Plus, if I'm only working from here to here, I don't have any strength in my abdominals anyway. I've strengthened them. I'm not using any of my key stabilizers because I'm on the floor. So I'm not going to think about activating the transverse. I'm not going to think about elevating up through the pelvic floor and acting and, and switching on my girdle. I'm not going to think about the multifidus. I'm not going to switch on my natural girdle in my body. I'm not going to turn it on because I don't need to because I've got this, the floor becomes my support and I don't need to use those muscles anymore. This is why you have to know how to get your results. You can follow a fad, you can follow something, you can all go out there and do 100 sit-ups, but I will challenge you, challenge you to see if you could do 100 sit-ups properly, properly through full range of motion on a ball. And that doesn't mean keeping yourself here and doing this. That's a waste of time as well, because you're still not working through full range of movement. This means bringing yourself back. And the further back you go, the harder it becomes. The further over the ball you come, the more work you've got. You'll probably get to 15 or 20, and you'll start to exhaust yourself. Because when I go back, before I come up, I engage my transverse. I draw up from my pelvic floor. I turn on my girdle. So I'm working from the lower abdominals first. And then I turn up and I curl chin to chest, round the shoulders and come up. It's a totally different move to what you're doing on the floor. Totally, totally, totally different. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Be careful of some of the challenges that are out there because they might sound good and you can say like, you know, I can do a hundred sit-ups. But if you want your posture to be here, if you want to, you know, decrease the movement ability of your internal organs, just so you can do 100 sit-ups, go ahead. If you think this looks good, that's fine. Me personally, I prefer to be open. I prefer to big up the chest and bring it here. So I'm not doing 100 sit-ups just because the challenge is set because I don't understand what the challenge is for. Anyway, I'm gonna put this on my group this weekend. So this is happening this weekend and it is at Redbridge Central Library in Ilford. It costs just one pound to get in. And these are the list of speakers. Let's see if you recognize anybody in that list. So I'll be doing two talks on that day, only 20 minutes long, so they're not gonna be as detailed as the workshops I run. Um, how to fight fibroids is one of the talks I'm doing. And of course the other one is how to live a fabulous life after 50. But it's going to be how to live a fabulous life after 50 with purpose and pain free. So that's the two things I'm doing. So please like and share, please share to your groups because there's a lot of people out there that will just see a hundred sit up challenge and they'll go out there and do that. And that's fine. It really is fine. It really is at the end of the day, your choice. But at least if you have a bit of information as to why you're choosing to do something, then at least that way you can make the choice. But if you're happy to actually restrict your rib cage, therefore actually inhibit the full function of your lower abdominal of your of your abdominal wall and your pelvic floor then go ahead and do it if you're happy to adjust your posture so you've made it go ahead and do it 
otherwise just design your program accordingly according to what you need when i started these facebook lives i showed you videos of the kind of things to consider if you were a tennis player like myself versus a cashier working on a till all day having the same rotation movement i showed you the things you need to do because if you're sitting on the same till working the same way all day long doing this over a period of time you're going to strengthen one side and weaken the other this is going to become short and tight this is going to become long and weak so you have to balance it out as a tennis player if you're dominant on one side you have to do exercises to balance it out i showed that for a postman i showed that for a ups driver so i told you they're the people that need to do 100 squats a day they should be doing 100 lunges and not find it hard because they are going into their vans they are lifting and pulling they are carrying they are stepping so they need to know what they have to do so i showed you those things so that's okay but you have to qualify your movements if i've got a postman and he finds it really hard to do a few squats and he finds it hard to do lunges i'm worried if he's carrying that bag all day long because that's how he's going to trash his back if I've got a mother cat and she's got twins, I'm giving her more squats and lunges than a woman that's got one child. Why? Because she's bending and picking for me probably twice the amount of time and she's carrying one here and doing this. So I'm looking at how she, I'm asking her questions about how she looks after her twins and what kind of movement she does and I can design her program accordingly. I've got someone sitting down at work all day on a desk and they've got low back pain and I'm having to look to how I can get them to increase their movement and look at different things I can do. That's how you design a program. That's how you do it. But these arbitrary challenges, they're, they're great motivations, but when it comes to sit-ups in the trunk, that's when I get worried. So that's why I'm just sharing this information with you. So like and share, and I will see you on Friday. Hey, Chris, how are you? Muriel, I haven't seen you for ages. Norna. I went to your yoga yesterday. <laughs> First time in two months. Anyway, we'll talk. Speak soon. Take care. Bye-bye.